turn up a real Appalachian holler. As you enter a holler, that's called the mouth of the holler. This particular holler here in McDowell County is called Three Forks Holler, and it starts at this little bridge, which is pretty common for these holler communities to follow a creek, just like you see here on the left. The holler is usually tucked in between two pretty close hillsides or mountainsides, so you typically only have sunlight in the holler for a few hours in the summer, and even less in the wintertime. <laughs> but it is nice to see how everything's starting to green up around us here as spring advances and summer approaches. And you know, even though this may seem or feel a little uh, remote or lonely or even forgotten, Appalachian holler communities are usually pretty close-knit and oftentimes they're settled by families who still live here today from long ago. And these people, they look out for one another, they take care of each other. If somebody's not doing well or they're sick, they're checking in on them, making sure they're okay. And they're watching who's driving up the holler too. <laughs> so I'm sure I've got some folks looking out windows wondering who I am. But I love seeing all the gardens and, and backyard chickens up here too because that just really tells me how self-sufficient and truly independent the spirit of the people are who live in these places. But you know what, that doesn't mean that they are what the stereotypes about them say they are. For example, just because they live in places like this doesn't mean that they're backwards or like some people think they're violent or dangerous towards outsiders or folks with out-of-state tags like I've got on my car. I kid you not, on my way here trying to find this holler, I did make a few stops along the way to shoot some footage and check some maps and I had no less than four or five people stop and check if I was okay or needed help. So these are good people. And you know what, it's not all that remote anymore. Well, you see the FedEx van right there, I mean, they're delivering out places like this. And a lot has changed in the last hundred years with roadways and such. But anyway, we've made it to the end of the holler, which is called the head of the holler, which is basically a dead end, a big turnaround like this. So we're gonna get turned around and head on back down the holler. As we head on out of the holler here, it looks like it's starting to sprinkle just a little bit, but nothing we can't handle, at least not yet anyhow. <laughs> oh goodness, but anyhow, as a just technical side note, I do have a really nice camera gimbal on order that I can mount here in the vehicle. So that way, moving forward, oh, looky there, we've got a dog in the holler. <laughs> That's also a pretty common sight, uh, that and chickens. But anyway, I've got a, a nice camera gimbal on order, and that's just gonna help us steady the camera, whether it's, it's a dash cam view like this, or if I want to mount it and point it back at me so we can have somewhat of a conversation as we drive through uh, haulers like this in Appalachia, or really any place we're exploring throughout Appalachia, because I want to bring you the best of quality I can as I produce these videos, and show you the sights and sounds of Appalachia. It's not always going to be from inside the car like this, but I certainly want to up the quality so that it's enjoyable and that you can experience Appalachia because I think there's a lot here worth seeing. There's a lot of stories, a lot of neat, interesting people, which inevitably we're going to come across those people. And it's my goal with these videos that I'm making as we explore Appalachia to interview some folks and get them on camera to tell their stories, where they're from, why they still choose to be here. So anyway, y'all, we're back at the mouth of the holler, off the gravel, and on to the asphalt. I hope y'all enjoyed that ride up the holler with me. Kind of a forgotten place, but not entirely. As you can see, there's still folks up there calling it home, and it's, it's wild to think that not too many years ago, McDowell was known as Little New York, largely because the coal boom and the supporting industries to that in the area. But I guess by modern and industrial standards today, time's kind of stood still here. Uh, some of these places do seem a little forgotten or lonely, but they're good places. It's a personal thing for me too. I've got family ties and uh, roots that probably are right in that, that particular holler or right close to it. So I wanted to come up here and see it for myself 
we kind of kickstart the whole Exploring Appalachia series of videos here on the YouTube channel, which they're really episodes that are going to be behind the scenes of a larger docu-series I'm working to produce uh, at the same time. So I'll be scouting out locations, and as I'm doing that, I'm sharing and, and producing these little episodes here on YouTube. And uh, I think it's going to be fun. So thank you all for checking out this video. I appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button that way it can spread to more people on YouTube because I think that the stories and the places here in Appalachia are worth seeing and that's worth sharing. So if you'd help me do that by giving this, this video a simple thumbs up, it will get to more people and I greatly appreciate that. And uh, hope to see you again riding shotgun with me on the next ride along. And until then, y'all take care.